I'm just uh, going to do a very quick uh, uh, <coughs> overview of uh, some of the, the things I find interesting, beautiful, or, or both in KDB. And uh, hopefully you'll find them interesting too. Right, so let's see. Yeah, that's me. Right, so I think one thing which we might not appreciate enough is that we can actually kind of see the data and touch, touch the data that we have this uh, REPL, which is probably full of quirks, but it's incredibly useful. So you can you know, type in something and keep reshaping. And I mean, for me, I, I, that's why I find that I struggle in like, uh, like a kind of compiled language that there is too much of a disconnect and I lose my train of thought. And I think that's something unappreciated, especially that uh, we can do this even with functions. I mean, strangely, it's something JavaScript got right, that it can actually print back the function to you, but you can try it in Python, Perl, Haskell, good luck. And this makes this kind of, all right, I have a running process, and I have to troubleshoot <coughs> and debug and fix problems. Uh, a piece of cake, or at least possible in KDB. So I find that very useful, and we can look at the underlying representation, and we can even look at like more funkier projections and stuff like that. And I find that uh, kind of underappreciated, or at least uh, I'm glad that we can do this <coughs> quite often. Another thing is that sometimes you might have come across that you have a dictionary and then which maps from symbols to some values. And you can just index into this dictionary with a name or you can use dot. And it's just like, why do we have these two things? And they work with tables too. So like, you know, knowing Arthur, why would he provide two separate ways to do the same stuff? And well, there is some speed difference. <coughs> uh, the dot works somewhat faster. And the question is that, OK, why, why could this be? Okay. So let's see if we try to look up a name which doesn't exist. In the first case, just using the symbol, <coughs> we would get the type of the first value. And if we use uh, dot, we get an error straight away. So this, like, this is one way of like kind of failing fast and you know not trying to run away with the process if you don't have some configuration, something you expected to have. And why are these kind of different, or why is the <laughs> the one with the dot faster should be kind of obvious from the the parse tree. Configure, yeah. When is dot not usable? Sorry? Oh, when? When is dot not usable? When? I mean, you cannot always use the dot. You can use the dot if uh, it maps from symbols to a general list on the right. <coughs> yeah, in the global space. But if you have a lambda function, then you cannot use dot, isn't it? No. I mean, you have to have a name. You have to m map from symbols to, to a general list. And it's so. If I would uh, do a dictionary which doesn't map to, I think even then it doesn't work. So it has to be mm -hmm. um, something which is actually a general list. Then cool. it works. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So configuration. Yeah. Uh, I've seen yeah. all kind of very fancy and very convoluted configuration <coughs> frameworks. So what could we kind of do about this? You know, let's say we have these like value uh, <coughs> and key pairs and you know, it's kind of like similar to like what Windows ini files used to look like. It's you know, 
easily readable and, and this takes this much code to actually read it in and then we read them in the data and then well we want to actually parse it and we want to provide some defaults and KDB has this built-in .q.dev function which is quite ingenious because it, from the, the dictionary on, in the first parameter it takes default values if it's missing from the right and it's also figuring out the type what to cast the, the one on the right to so we can you know, convert whatever we wanted to and provide <coughs> a default value. And I think you don't need much more than that. But right. Another thing which I haven't seen used that much and I think it's a shame is uh, <coughs> some code written by um, Alexander. Um, he put it on code.kx.com. One of them is, um, is um, implementation of the foreign <coughs> function interface. So you can just <coughs> load in um, a compiled library which does the marshalling between KDB, KDB's format and whatever like underlying <coughs> operating system libraries use. And then you, know, you can do stuff for which you would either write C code with all the headache it comes with or you wouldn't would want to do it in KDB then you know it's time you have to uh, <coughs> put in and find your own bugs and all that so for example we can call the sprintf you know library function with a buffer in KDB and you know, do some formatting and, and it will be there and there is nothing to, to do, nothing else to do. We can like similarly you know, find, figure out our own PID which you know, of course matches the one <coughs> you already, already built into KDB. Um, we can figure out our parent PID and these are just examples. This is you know, something which we cannot do otherwise. And, you know, just to show that that's actually matching. We can, you know, <coughs> call you sleep to sleep for that many <laughs> microseconds and I find this all very useful. Uh, the other one is <coughs> magic. So this thing is about uh, when you call the Linux function or Unix function file on some data file or source code file, it has some rules based on which it tries to figure out what kind of data that is. And uh, he kindly provided uh, some configuration for that. So if you write a file, then you can use this magic file, and then it will tell you that actually that uh, KDB version free uh, vector of longs which has a unique attribute on it. Unfortunately, for compressed files, it just says it's compressed, but well, life isn't perfect. <laughs> right. Um, right. This is about a very common trick we do in KDB, and I just have a couple of examples. So let's say we want to fill backward, not forward. Then this kind of trick we keep doing is we reverse the whole thing, we fill forward and we reverse the, and it sounds terrible, and it is terrible because it has a, you know, mm -hmm.